Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Joe's Wild Side Adventures. Today I'm with the Wet Fly Water Guides up here in central Pennsylvania, and uh, we're going to be doing some uh, wild trout and some uh, controlled areas. And I'm with guides George Lashinsky and Dave Abba. How you doing, guys? Same. Nice, Joe. Good. I'm uh, really glad to be out here. Thanks for having me up. And uh, just briefly, uh, what are we going to be doing today, uh, getting started here? Um, what we're going to be doing is is fishing one of the uh, one of the smaller wild trout streams here in the northern part of the state and um, mostly uh, some wild brook trout, some, brown, uh, some wild browns and there's a few stocked fish here too. Um, the, the creek is, is somewhat small. Um, we have uh, a few nice pools on the stream. We have uh, a lot of chop, a lot of pocket water and um, we're going to be fishing strictly with dry flies with uh, short uh, short seven foot rods, four weight rods, and that's, that's about okay. it. Okay, and uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the uh, wet fly uh, water guides, how these guys are long time buddies. So stay tuned everybody when we come back. Joe's Wild Side Adventures from Central Pennsylvania. So Dave, before we get started, uh, this is going to be basically native fish, uh, and we're going to go after these natural trout with uh, some top water flies that you guys have tied, right? Correct. Um, what we what we normally use on on the smaller streams here uh, for the wild trout is just a wide variety of uh, elk haired caddises, some stimulators. Uh, we want something to float on the water for a very long time. Uh, a lot of the water is uh, very fast moving, um, some pockets here and there. Um, we do have some, some fairly long pools on it. And um, so we want something that's going to float a long time mm -hmm. and usually brings the fish right to the surface. All right, well, let's go give it a shot. Okay, nice we hooked up. That's a, I think a brownie. Uh, Is that a rainbow or a brownie? It's a nice fish, though. First cast with that uh, stimulator. That stimulator. Yeah. Well, he hit that hard, didn't he? Oh, what a pretty fish. That's about a 13 incher, mm -hmm. 14 thick. I don't want a horse him too bad. Oh, nice brownie. Well, what a pretty fish that is. Fish Joe. All right. That's a good one. All nice right. One. That looks like another brownie. Huh? Looks like another oh, I brownie. I thought it was a rainbow. Oh, well, yeah, it is a bow. Yeah, good bow. Big bow. All right. Nice size fish. Come on, buddy. Let's get in that current. Yeah. Don't let him go over that. Hang on, Joe. Well, that's a nice Yeah, bow. that's a nice rainbow. Uh, he's right at the 
We can see if we can get him because he's, uh, I don't want to snap here, him Jeff? off. Bring him over here. I'm going to get out of the way here. There we go. Oh, nice fish. Oh, that's a pretty fish. That's a nice bow. That's a pretty rainbow there. Nice colors on him. Get the fly out of him. Beautiful. Pretty fish. Look at that. All right, I'm gonna let him back. There he goes. Ooh. Oh, Joe, that was a big fish. That was a <laughs> big fish. I seen him come right up. Yep. I just set too late. Oh, it's about time. We got a little wild got one. Got a little one. Keep him tight. Keep him tight. Still on? Yep. <laughs> now there's a little wild trout. That's a little wild brookie. He had some guts eating that fly, didn't he? <laughs> Fly's almost as big as he Look is. Yeah, little wild brook trout, little baby. And this is obviously a very small, very that's, small. That's the smaller guys. You can yeah. see the par markings on the side of them, uh -huh. those lateral lines yeah. up and down on their sides. And those bright red spots on there. That fish is, was born and raised right here. And get one in there deep enough. Here we go. Uh. Right about there. Come on, you. There he there is. You got him. Yeah, ah, that's it. <laughs> Knew sooner or later he was gonna. Yeah. Oh. 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 <laughs> he lost. Let's see if I can get it back in there again. There we go. Right there. All right, Joe. He was hiding, he's just hanging right on that root there. Whew. It looks like a better one. I huh? had to work hard oh, yeah. for that one. That's Let's see if we can that's get a, it. That's a nicer fish. Nice, it's a nice little. brookie. Yeah. Nice wild brook trout. There we go. So this is pretty typical wild. Uh, that's wild brookie that, here. That there is the normal size is just a little bit smaller in there. That's a that's a decent sized fish. Yeah. Here. You can see the white, see the orange and the white and uh -huh. black. Yeah. On the fins. In the fall, the, the, they'll get a lot more brilliant. Uh -huh. on, on there. Okay. Actually, when you walk up to some of the shallower holes, you can actually spot the fins. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, I mean, they stick out so yeah. well in the water, and you can actually spot them right away. Yeah, you could, the, the colors on these these uh, native fish are just so yeah. magnificent. So, uh, well, we're going to get him back. We don't want to hurt him. Hey, stay tuned, everybody. When we come back, more Joe's Wild Side Adventures with Wet Fly Water Guides. Okay, buddy, there you go. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're going to switch it up a little bit, and I'm going to work with George. Uh, we're going to we uh, move down the road a little bit, another section of the stream, and uh, we're going to work this area over here. Some uh, uh, again, some stockfish, some rainbows, uh, some wild browns, and some wild brookies. We're going to go after. Correct. Right? And we're going to start out with this attractor pattern. This has been pretty successful for us so far today, so we're going to stay with it and. Uh, work this area up. We got about a, what, a mile or so? To work yeah, up. yeah, easy mile. We'll work up through here and take our time and work along the uh, outer edges here and stuff and hopefully we'll be able to produce some fish for you. Okay. It just amazes me how those fish can dart out from underneath a rock and catch that thing when it's going that fast. Yeah. You know, just bam. Yeah. There we go. They don't miss too many of them either. Uh-uh. Even if we don't pull a fish out of this little run here, it isn't that gorgeous. Look at that, just coming down through here, tree hanging over the stream, and there's just miles and miles of this, yeah, right? Yeah, this, yeah, basically the whole stream, it's just like a repeat, it just keeps looping and looping. The whole stream's like this the whole way up. Yeah, every time we turn and go around another bend, it's prettier than the next one we yeah. just came from. But this yeah. is, the only thing we need to do now is catch a fish in here. <laughs> when you come up through here and you got this clear water like that, you know that they're underneath those rocks. Mm -hmm. See that big flat rock that's yeah. hanging? You see that, that little shelf yep. that's underneath yep. it? 
you can get your fly up on the upside of that and let mm -hmm. that float right over top of that little shelf right there. Think about these, okay. think about these wild trout. You know, they're not very big and it doesn't take much to hide them. You get into the, these mountain streams like this and they're so clear. I mean, that's, you know, that's an easy, that's a telltale sign of the, you know, where the runs are that you want to fish the seams and stuff. They'll uh -huh. get the, that color changing. I mean, just gin clear water. Yeah, just that's gorgeous. You know what amazes me is when you come up through a, a section of water like this and you work it and work it and work it and nothing, you know? Yeah. And you can come back like later on in the evening and a hatch starts or something and it's They're like somebody's standing on the bank, you know, throwing handfuls of shell in, but yet when you were here earlier, you know, you work your tail off and you can't produce a fish. I'm gonna get one and let it go underneath. Oh, that's beautiful. Good job, man. I knew he was in there. Good job. Had to be in there. You can't have a run like that without a fish <laughs> being in it. There's just there's no way. Another little wild That's, one, huh? Yeah. Nice little brookie there. Is that a brookie or a brown? I can't tell you. Uh, that looks, looks like, like a, a baby brown. That's a brook. Oh, is that a brook? Yeah, check his fins out. There's a little bit of white outlined there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See what I was telling you about their lips? See how they yeah, got they the look little like black. they got that lipstick on there? Uh-huh. He wasn't hooked very well either. Beautiful little native, little probably a little tough to see from that far away, but the colors are unbelievable. And you know, you're talking about a six, seven inch fish. Yeah. Just so much fun to catch. Okay, fella. I mean, personally, in my opinion, I think that that's, that's probably some of the best fishing that you have in the state of fishing for the, the, the wild trout. It's, uh -huh. I mean, you look at the stream and, you know, the setting's just perfect. Yeah. I mean, you know, the wet fly fishing that, that we offer, when you come up here and you do, do those trips, the, the casting's important, but not quite as important as this is. I mean, you uh -huh. can, obviously, you can see when you're fishing for wild trout, you have all the canopy over you and stuff, so your casting's a lot more important. You know, one, one thing I did notice about um, this wild trout fishing, uh, usually when I fish a lot of stock streams and, you know, game management areas, you could see the fish, right. you know, hiding behind a rock. Cause you kind of, you know, after a while you get to know right. where you they're know gonna where hang yeah, out. You know, you know where and you look and look, but I have not seen one fish yeah. in the water. Yeah, they're, they're, they're sneaky. Small, they're they're sneaky. small, sneaky, and they're so smart and spooky that, right. you know, you don't see them until they're up out of the water right. with the fly in their exactly. mouth. Exactly. I think he might be a right little, there. I think he's a little bit deep. There he is. <laughs> two times in a row. Come on, man! Third time's a charm. I know. I didn't, I didn't stick him that time either. There oh, there he is! Good job. <laughs> you know what, though? I don't think that's, that's the, not him. That's not him. <laughs> that's not him. I don't think that's so. That's another buddy. one, though. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Another brookie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that unless unless he moved, that one was a little bit shorter than than the other one you missed there. Just trying to try and handle these fish nice and gentle. Things in there. There you go. There not, look at the colors, that purple. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> quick release. He's so going he right says, back home too, look at him. Oh, wow, look how pretty this fish is. He tried to tangle me up, didn't he? Well, you know, every time you want to take a picture with a fish, you saw that I uh, had him right here and every, trying to get everybody in position, but uh, he got away from me. That means I'm going to have to get another one, huh? No problem. All right. <laughs> We were talking a little bit earlier about the canopies and some of the casting, so I gotta actually get on my knees over here and try to get this fly up underneath some of these low-hanging uh, pine pine branches. So uh, as long as my knees hold out, we'll, we'll try it and see what we can come up with in here. 
one just came up, Joe. Where? Just straight out ahead of you. Okay. He's up further than that and okay. out, out into the riffle more. Okay. There we go. There he is. Oh, oh. I missed him on a first cast. <laughs> okay, we got a fish that's uh, rolled on my fly two times. It's right. I'm trying to get back in the same strike zone, but haven't been able to get it on him. There he is. Oh. <laughs> I would say that was a little aggressive of a hook set, but I got him. <laughs> Sooner or later, he'd come back and try and take it from me. Well, that's a tiny little guy there. So he's he's, he's up. Like a couple inches right in there. Right there he is. Good shot, Joe. There we go. That's a good one. All right. I underestimate you, Joe. Uh -huh. This is why these natives are just so much fun to catch. Look how beautiful the colors on that fish are. And that's about the average size. That's about shot. the average oh. size. Well, he jumped out of my hand. We got him back in the water. We really don't want to kill the fish, but uh, you could see the, the just the brilliant colors on these natives. And that was about an average size fish, right? That was about an average size fish yeah. for here. Got to be careful. I'm so used to hooking those big 30, 40 pound fish that, yeah. you know, that hook set just pulls them right out of the water. So exactly. it's just a, just a subtle. Exactly. Just but, a twitch of the wrist a little bit, and they're right on. And like I said, we use we use all barbless hooks, so uh -huh. flies come out real easy. And if you don't put, if you don't hold the pressure on them, if you leave them with a little bit of slack, they usually just pop right off. Yeah. Uh, you know while you're bringing them in. But man, are they fun? And, and uh, George saw that one rising a few times over there. I was yeah. bound to determined to get that fly over there and get him, and he came out and got it. That's good there, Joe. Look at the colors. Well, we, uh, we had a pretty nice run up there uh, with those wild brookies and uh, Unfortunately, I probably missed 75% of the ones at least, that hit the at least, fly, yeah. but we were able to get a, a, a bunch of them. And, and that's the whole thing, you, you know, uh, you're going to look at the show and you're going to see these fish, they're pretty small, but that's the reason I came up here. I wanted to catch some wild fish, uh, you know, we can go get the stock stuff uh, at any time, but to come up here and catch wild brook trout and wild brown trout is a, is a treat, and I really had a great, great time. And I guess we have another spot to go this afternoon here, huh? Correct. We're going to get on another piece of water that uh, usually produces uh, some pretty decent fish on it. And okay. We'll get some wild ones and hopefully we'll get maybe uh, maybe a couple big ones. Okay, that would, that would be great. Uh, yeah, and may, hopefully my, uh, my uh, strike percentage <laughs> and hook percentage will be a lot better than it was at this, uh, this last round we did. Stay tuned everybody, when we come back, more Joe's Wild Side Adventures in North Central Pennsylvania with Wet Fly Water Guides. You ever get that that feeling where you know there's going to be a hit? Yeah. That, that's <laughs> how I feel right here. This just looks so fishy. Come on. Don't make a liar out of me. native. Fish has been torturing me for 25 minutes. Finally got one, got him to eat one.
See that one over yep. there? Swirled. Yeah. Should I go after him or stay here? There, over there's another one too. That's a half decent fish too. Straight out from the right up there. You see him? I see him. Oh, oh yeah. Right there, right there. There, you got it. Good shot. Good shot. Nice. Well, I'll tell you what, these things are sure, they sure know how to fight for such little, little fish. That was a good shot, Joe. That's a nice size that's one. That's a nice fish. That's a nice, that's a nice fish. That's a, is that a brown? I can't t really tell you. Is it? Oh, that's a nice brook trout. Yeah, very nice. Good fish. shot, Joe. That's a brown. Is it a brown? Yeah. Nice little brown trout. Look at the colors on him. Now that's a. Is that a wild one? That's a wild one. Wild brown. Look at the yeah. red dots. A little red fin on his. Yeah, tip. you see the you see the par marks on him. Yeah. Okay, buddy. Joe, so, there's another one right up, almost right across from that flat rock up there that's in the water off the bushes. Boy, and there's another one right in the middle too. That's good. Got to go over about a foot to your right. There you go. See him right? There he is. He's coming up. Boy, he's a nice one, too. Too far. Might be too far. You're too far to the right. Okay. You got to come a little bit more to the left. I, I wish I could see him, you know, once. Perfect. Perfect. You dropped it right on top of him. There he is. Yep. Good shot. Good one, Joe. Yeah, he is. Good shot. Very nice fish. Well, they start coming on strong this afternoon, huh? Maybe that sun went down. All right, we're gonna get this guy on the reel so he doesn't uh, play games with. Well, that's a strong fish. This one's actually taking some line. Oh, that's a that's a good one. That's a real good one, Joe. I still haven't had a look at him yet. Nice fish, Joe. Excellent. Easy, easy. Yeah. That's a that's a oh, wild that's, brown. That's a wild brown. That's wow. We got to get this guy on um, camera. I don't he know if you beauty. can. I don't know if you can get him I'll over get him, here I'll towards get him the bank. Sure. I just let him tire tire out. I don't want to horse him. I'll tell you what, when I grab the leader, you want to take my take the rod sure, and I'll sure. just kind of work him in. Here's the rod. Okay, Joe. okay big guy. Easy. Come on, big fella. Easy. Easy. If he wants to go, Joe, yeah, let him yeah. go. Yeah. Come on, big fella. I think he's about tired out, yeah. Be careful. He's thick, too. Ooh, don't That's... spit it now, buddy. There you go. There, Joe. There's two more rising out there. Hang on, Joe. Mm -hmm. Got it. Look at that. Wild native brown trout. That thing is spectacular. He's got to be 15, 16 inches. Yeah. You can see the red down here on his tail. Uh huh. And the red on this, and the little fin on the back, and yeah. all the nice, all the nice spots on him. That's yeah. that's that's a great fish for this. Wow, that is just that's, beautiful. That's beautiful. Look at the fish. colors. Hey folks, that's going to do it for today's show. Dave and George, I can't thank you guys enough for a wonderful day out here catching these wild fish. 
uh, in central Pennsylvania with the uh, wet fly water guides. You got to give Dave and George a call. We're going to give you their website information, phone number, how you can come out here and fish with these guys. I had a spectacular time. I'd shake your hand, Great, but Jeff. I want to get this guy back. Great. Hey, everybody, make sure you stay tuned for Cooking on the Wild Side coming up next. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. All right, let's get this guy back. You don't get too many like that here, Joe. Beauty. I'm telling you what, man. Hello everybody, welcome back to Cooking on the Wild Side. Today I'm going to prepare a baked red snapper in sea salt over a roasted tomato and red potatoes. And our guest today, hi Marge, how are you? I'm fine. That's good. I'm gonna have a little bit of wine today with our uh, snapper. How you doing, Dell? Good, Joe, good to be here. This is a very easy, very simple process and it uh, takes about 30 minutes to cook the fish. So we're gonna go through and uh, show you the ingredients. I have a whole red snapper here and it's just a little over two pounds. Over here we have some tomatoes. I uh, have some olive oil and garlic, some fresh herbs, some hot chili peppers, black pepper, and salt. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get the sea salt and we're gonna pour it in here. This is going to act as the bed. And we'll take our snapper and we're going to set it right on top of the salt. We're going to cover it. it. Takes a few times until you get the whole entire fish covered. You just want to make sure you pack it down. We're going to place our fish on the rack. And I have my uh, griddle out here, and we're going to put these tomatoes in. They don't take very long at all, just a couple of minutes, and we'll have them finished. Put a little bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper, and we're gonna put some herbs. I have some olive oil and some sliced garlic, and what this is going to be is the uh, topping for the fish. So once we get the fish uh, clean, deboned, and uh, on the plate, on top of the tomatoes, we're gonna fry this garlic, and we're gonna put some of this uh, extra virgin olive oil and garlic right over the top of the fish. All right, looks like our tomatoes are finished. So I'm just gonna take them off. Look how pretty that looks. And here's our fish. All right. Now this seems like a lot of work and a lot of effort to go through to cook a fish. But I'll tell you what, once you have it this way, it is just so flavorful and so tasty that it's worth the wait. plate. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put our tomatoes on plates and we're going to put a couple of potatoes. So now what we want to do is we want to take the skin away. Now you have nice filet all the way down and you just want to peel this skin back. And then I'm going to take the knife and we're going to go right down the uh, the rib cage. We'll get a fork. Once you have the meat off of one side, then you simply pull the skeleton right off and put that right in there. Pretty slick, huh? Yes, it Very. is. <laughs> Marge and Dale were telling me a story about one of their children having a, a, a whole fish in a restaurant and they put it on their plate and they, neither one of them had ever been exposed to that and uh, no one helped them take it off the bone so it could be a frustrating experience but, but in my kitchen I'm going to take the fish, <laughs> I'm going to take it off the bones for you. Alright now we're going to take our olive oil and we're going to just drizzle it with some of the fried garlic on here. All right, so now I'm just gonna touch it with just a few sprinkles of sea salt, fresh. You don't wanna use the sea salt that you baked in. Just a couple kernels on there. And then for the adventurous types, I have some really hot Spanish uh, chili peppers. And to finish it off, we're gonna drizzle the plate with a little bit of fresh parsley. And there you have it. Baked red snapper and sea salt over grilled tomatoes and roasted red potatoes. Joe, it's a work of art now. Thank 
Thank you. The peppers will go first. Usually I serve the ladies first, but uh, there you go, Marsh. Thank you. Thank you. Well, folks, I hope you enjoy. I'm going to stand back. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to stand back and let you take a, a little you. taste of that. Thank you. Cheers. Well, Joe, the, the wine's wonderful. It looks like what should go with this meal. That's right, <laughs> exactly. Mmm, delicious. Oh my Thank gosh, you. is that ever good. Wonderful, oh nice, my nice job. Thank you very nice much. Job. This is delicious, all oh, that taste, yeah. yes. Well, it looks like Marge and Dell are enjoying their fish. So that's gonna do it for this week's show, folks. I'd like to thank you for watching Cooking on the Wild Side. So until the next time, thanks for watching. Bon appetit.